Welcome to the ShareWalls online tutorial videos. In this video, we will go through some modeling techniques and tips inside the software. In ShareWalls, some maneuvering techniques may not be intuitive to new users, but are important to learn in order to ease the modeling of structures inside the software. The maneuvering techniques covered in this video consist of creating structure blocks with different story levels, moving walls to achieve complex plan layout, and how to create different plan layouts for different levels. I will also cover how to create monoslop roofs and canopies. Finally, I will give you some tips on whether you need to model partitions in the ShareWall software. Let's first talk about creating structures having different number of stories on different portions of the building. This is particularly useful if you have, for example, a two-story house with a one-story garage. To do this, you will have to create a two-story structure block for the house and attach a single-story structure block for the garage. Separate structure blocks are necessary when modeling structures like this. For more tips on understanding and utilizing structure blocks, Please refer to the video ShareWalls Best Practices 1, available in the description of this video. Next, let's talk about creating complex plan layout involving non-rectangular shapes. For example, if you want to create a U-shaped structure containing the same number of stories in each portion of the structure, you could create one structure block and move the walls to match the U-shape. Here's a simple tutorial on how to do so. The first step is to create separate wall segments in a shear line. To do this, you first have to select a shear line and then hover the cursor at the first separation point. Then, click and drag the mouse to the approximate location of the second separation point. Once this is done, the shear line is broken into several segments. You can then adjust the exact dimension and location of each wall segment from the wall's input view. Next, you need to select the wall segment you wish to move and while pressing the shift key, change its location by dragging the wall. Here again you can adjust the exact location of the wall from the wall's input view. You could also create a L-shaped building by attaching two structure blocks. You can move the walls by using the shift key or you can select a certain wall and specify its exact location from the wall's input window. Another capability of the software is to create a structure where the layout of one story is different from other stories. For example, a structure with the area of the second story larger than that of the first story. In fact, all you have to do is create a two-story structure block, navigate to the second level, and move the wall outward by dragging the wall while pressing the shift key. After that, you can adjust the wall location in the wall's input window to match the shape of the level. Now, let's talk about some roof maneuvering techniques. If you wish to create a monoslope roof, the easiest way is to move the ridge location to the edge of the wall. For example, if you have a 6 meters by 8 meters structure block, you can change the ridge location to the far end of the structure, which is either 0 or 8 meters in this case, and the software will treat it as a monoslope roof. By going to the elevation view, you can see the roof shape. Canopies are sometimes attached to the main structure. To create a canopy, you have to manually add an additional roof block and attach it to the existing structure. By doing so, you will create a roof without adding walls below the roof. A frequently asked question regarding walls is whether users need to model partitions, like interior walls, when completing the load analysis. The answer is that modeling all partitions for sheer purposes is not necessary. If you specify partitions in the software, the only effect is that they add additional building mass to the structure and therefore affects the seismic load on the structure. We recommend the following when dealing with partitions. If you don't draw them, you should specify additional superimposed building mass for the floor system 
which is typically 0.5 to 1.0 kPa from the loads and forces tab. However, if you do draw the partitions, you should specify them as non shear wall in the walls view tab. By doing so, it may be helpful later on in the modeling process if you realize that you are going to need additional shear walls to resist lateral loads.